Yeah, that's that's about what I'm using. I'm using Orvis 1642. So we're live, so don't say anything nasty, Tim. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tim and I are Tim Oops. and I are just comparing hooks. We're hook geeks. And we were just looking at some hooks. Okay. So ahead. Tim oh, okay. is I, I gotta go back, right? There I am. Yeah. So you're tying it. on a you're tying on a lightning strike size 12 1x long, yeah, and uh, 2x heavy 1x long uh, size 12 nymph wet hook it's called. Yeah, and I'm tying on a very similar hook. It's the Orvis uh, 1x long 1642. Um, so a very a pretty hook, nice round bend. Um, yeah, it's really uh, it's a really cool hook. You know what? You know what hooks? You know what hooks? I love for wet flies, but What's I that? only have a few left. Let me show it. This is a. I can find it here in my drawer. Is I it a mustad? No, it's an <laughs> alpha. <laughs> so it's these. Let's see if I can get it in front of the camera. It's these uh, old Alcock Sprout hooks, hand, oh, you know, wow. from England. Yeah, I used when I tied commercially years and years ago. I used to tie on these, and uh, I saved some of them because they're just a beautiful hook. Um, you know, typical Sprout bend, one uh, X long. They're a lot like that one you showed me. I don't know if, Anyway, yeah, you can't see it. Oh, you can see it now. But it's a really it's a really pretty hook. These hooks are probably 60 years old. Jeez. No, maybe 50. But they're, they're I was going to say were you four when you were commercial tying or No, no. They're they're probably Yeah, they're probably 50 years old cuz 50 years ago I, I was tying commercially, so Anyway, they're my little treasures. I don't tie. I don't tie on them. I'd I'm save. I'd save them for flies I was going to put in a frame or something like that. Yeah, I have a couple of those little nuggets as well. That yeah, yeah. Collected over the years. Somewhere I have some old Ray Bergman hooks. A couple of old Ray Bergman hooks too. I think really? Mustad made those. Maybe yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, so I, who I, do we have? We have Mark, we have Ed, we have Ralph, Tim, we got the UK, we got Florida, we got the Texas Gulf Coast, we got Roger Bird, of course, we got Bill from Indiana, we got Bill from Downingtown, PA, oh, we got Warren from New Zealand, wow, we got Justin indeed. from Staten Island, we are international. We must be famous flag. I, I, guess so. I think it's tomorrow <laughs> in New Zealand, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tomorrow. Hey, if it's tomorrow, <laughs> did I win? Tell us what's already happened. Yeah, um. yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so I, I I don't know. I don't know why people from all over the world are tuning in. I think it's just the drama of waiting for one of us to screw up on this fly because it is live. So uh, yeah. you never know what might happen. Well, and maybe it's, maybe it's the, to, to watch hair and facial hair grow, um, you know, week to week or month to month. That's the, uh, I'm getting a haircut that. next week. I'm getting, I'm getting a haircut oh, really? next week. I'm getting a haircut. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to go I, for the ponytail there for a while, but. No, no, I don't think I, I guess I got enough. I was going to do a man bun for this thing today just to be stupid. <laughs> and, you know, um, and I was going to get my brother-in-law to, to uh, help me, or my son-in-law to help me uh, do my man bun. But then I, I, I chickened out. I decided not to. Yeah. Not really. I'm not really a man bun kind of guy. So. You, you would have definitely won if you'd done the man bun, I think. Oh really? Yeah, um, yeah. There's still next week. I'm not getting a haircut. Oh no, it's no. We want. We aren't doing it for another month after this. Oh well, yeah. too bad. So anyway, 
Um, enough of us blathering for you people who are here to listen to some fly tying. Tim and I are uh, tying a, a classic hare's ear wet fly. And, you know, you, you see a lot of um, people tying soft tackles these days. And there's a lot of interest in, in soft tackles. But you don't see as much of the standard winged wet fly being tied or even fished. And um, they're they're really effective patterns. Oh yeah, maybe yeah, absolutely. maybe no more effective than a, than a soft tackle, but um, I think they can be like when caddis come back to lay their eggs and they're diving underwater. Um, you know, it's it's such a great imitation of a, of a diving winged caddis. And um, I also uh, have a strong suspicion that fish take. Uh, these winged wet flies for small bait fish, really, really small, uh, just hatched, uh, swim up fry of bait fish. Yeah, and that, that weight at, really sells it as a bait fish. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I was looking at I was looking at these tiny sculpins in a river behind my house. They had just hatched, and I'm looking down at them, and I'm looking at them in the water, thinking, "Wow, that looks exactly like a dark Cahill wet." No Believe kidding. it or not, you know the hackle imitates those those little um, those little pectoral fins, and the wood duck over the back imitates the mottled back of the sculpin, and then the the hackle fiber tails imitate the tail, and the gray imitates the body. Of the, I mean, it really looked like a little baby sculpin. So, I think yeah, I think sometimes sometimes they take our winged wet flies for a little tiny swim up fry. Well, oh, just like crazy. Crazy yeah. theory. As long as they take it, right? That's all that matters. Yeah, I've never found, I've never pumped a stomach and found a tiny, tiny bait fish um, in there, but it may not, those things may not come out when you pump their stomachs anyways. But um, I don't know, they, they gotta eat them. They gotta eat them. They're small and they're yeah. helpless and they're high protein, so. Yeah, sure, absolutely. I think they gotta eat them. Yeah, prob probably uh, a dozen or so at a time if they drive right through a little school of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you um, do you fish winged wet flies a lot? No, I really don't. Um, and you know they're 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 not the most durable things, and nope. not not that it really matters. But it, it's pretty much you know two or three casts, and that that wing is pretty much trashed. Um, you know if it's if it's yeah. a like a uh, um, you know a mallard. A duck. A duck wheel wing, duck yeah. Wheel wing like this, yeah. And so, um, and and on on the the wets, I I'm kind of you know in like a partridge in orange things like that 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 don't include the wing. Um, I, yeah. I do fish some wing ones, but but those uh, you know, just those soft hackles are are kind of where I'm leaning now. They are they are good, but you know, I figured this is kind of a sort of a historical sort of a traditional fly and it does involve some skills that that a lot of people don't use that often so i figured it'd be an interesting one to tie particularly if if people you know if people tie um atlantic salmon flies or steelhead flies wing steelhead flies um they're gonna they're gonna use this winging technique to set their wings so yeah and this one is um for everybody out there this fly was tom's choice not mine just throwing <laughs> that out there <laughs> Not one of my favorites, but um, yeah, I uh, people have seen my video on YouTube with this fly know that I I, uh, I I wing it a little differently than most people do. So it's kind of a cheat, and uh, I get around some of the harder parts by cheating. So we'll, we'll I can't see. wait to see. I can't yeah, wait to see. Them. You don't call them cheats. Call them uh, improved techniques. Now, I have have you seen that video that I did on YouTube? No, I never watch your videos. Okay. Well, no, good. I do. I watch a lot of your videos, but I haven't seen, because, I haven't seen that one. Because if we end up tying in that wing the same way, I'm going to be really pissed. Um, I really am. Uh, no, I, I'm my. I set my wing very traditionally. Okay. I don't. I don't do any. I don't do any tricks. I. I really think that if you, if you, select your wing slips properly. You can just use a standard pinch and and get it in there. Okay. Good. Get it in there, right? <laughs> you know, one of the things one of the things we should mention is yes, these duck quill wings 
are um, very uh, delicate and we work so hard to set these wings to make them look right. And then after a, a fish or a few dozen casts, they kind of fall apart. But if you set the wing properly, um, even when the wing gets, gets trashed, it's still going to be symmetrical and it's going to swim right. If you sw set the wing improperly and it's cocked to the side or it's imbalanced, yeah, it's even once it gets, even once it gets bunged up, it's not going to, it's still not going to look good. So, right. You know, right. getting the wing, getting the wing right is important. Now, did, did you ever try, I, there was a time anyway, where, where people were using like fixatives on, on the, on the, the feather to, to kind of toughen it up. Do you, do you do yeah. that at all? Or? No, no, I don't. I was taught when I tied this fly commercially that it's cheating and I shouldn't do it. And I've just, okay. never, it kind of, it kind of stiffens them. And that, that was know. my feeling. And I never really yeah. liked doing it, but they kind of, no. insisted, kind of insisted there for a while that that's the way to do it with like a spray yeah. fixative or soft text or something like that. And it always got real, like when, when I went to tie it in, it, it was just gummy one at the tie in point. And I never really liked yeah. doing it. Yeah. Um, it looks, terrible. but it did, it did make for a tougher wing. The, the, you know, the little things wouldn't separate as badly because um, they're effectively glued yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Well, yeah, it's, I'm seeing way. a lot of people that I'm seeing a lot of people that talk about fishing um, winged wet. So that's good. Well, here's, here's another thing, Tom, is I, I don't know about you, but I started doing that, you know, the trout spay stuff, the, you yep. know, little three, three weight trout spay rods. And that's kind of brought the wet fly thing back for me, uh, in, mm -hmm. in a big way, because it, yeah. it's a, a great way to, to, to fish wets, you know, two, yep. three, even more at a time. And, and, uh, it's just fun to do. Just let them swing across and wait for the wait for the grab. And and this is a great fly on a um, on a on a trout spay outfit too. This yeah, pairs yeah. of wet be a great fly. Well, should we start tying? Sure. Is this Absolutely. camera this camera has a thirty minute auto shut off that I cannot make it go any longer. So I'm about to I'm about at my limit. I have to turn it oh, off okay. and then turn it on. So. So okay. let's go tie. All let's right, you want to go first? Well, the tails, yeah, I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go first. Just the tails. Well, we got to talk about thread and... Um, oh, yeah, thread. Thread and what you're actually using for the tail. Yes, okay. So we I am... The book, though, right? Have we covered the book? Yeah, I think we're both using a one X long. We're both using a one X long. Um, there's my hook. It's you can tell how old those hooks are. That's an old. <laughs> that's an old package. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Well, you know, there's no sense. There's no sense in. Um, no sense in buying. I mean, they're they're still perfect. No sense in. Buy new hooks. I don't wet, use wet fly hooks that much. So, yeah, all right. So little... I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to widen up because um, I'm gonna have to widen up because you're stealing my real estate. <laughs> so anyway, you cut me out. Is Flagler, that what you get in the way? You get in the way of my tying, Flagler. Oh, I, I gotta go over that right. way. So this is the hook I'm using. It's a it's a one X long wet nymph, Orvis 1642 size 12, chemically sharpened hook. Um, you can use a, a 1641, which is a uh, standard length. Um, I'm going to put this in the vise, and I'll come back and get my tails. Well, maybe I'll maybe I'll go to this camera. All right, so I'm going to put this hook in the vise, and then you can see it a little bit better. There's the hook. Hey, Flagler, get out of my way. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> you're you're trying to do that. You're trying to do that. So you so you beat me. You're trying to you're trying to take my real estate there. 
All right. Yeah, you can see a little see a little rust on the shank of that hook. It is old. Okay. So, I, anyways, I'm going to start my thread, and I am using 12O thread. Um, you can get away with um, you can get away with a lot more turns, and um, I think it's I think it's advantageous and helped me setting the wing. So I'm just going to start my thread, and then I'm going to go back and grab my tail fibers. So just I'm starting my thread, and I'm going all the way back to the bend, and fill. Oh, I forgot questions if we have any questions phil um call my cell i forgot julia usually calls my cell so phil call my cell and then you can you can ask us ask us questions okay so um my tails are just um i just used uh, this uh, hen saddle, it's nice and soft, and I just come up brown. You can use any old hackle you want, or anything brown. You could use partridge or whatever, and I'm just going to come in and tweak a fairly small amount of these fibers from the stem. And then come back to my hook and and I like my tail I don't know about you Tim but I like my tails fairly short on wet flies so um, uh, yeah you, you you and me both like less than a shank half, length for me half to three quarters of a shank length yeah. I'm gonna angle them a little bit toward me and then just lay them down on top of the hook and are these supposed to imitate tails of an insect? Maybe they could also maybe imitate a shock. You know, who knows? Um, it helps balance out the fly. And I'm going to cut those off. And now, Mr. Flagler, it's you. It's my it's turn. Time to answer his phone. Yeah. Julia says she's calling itself. Uh, Julia is calling yourself. Answer okay. your phone. <laughs> Hi, Julia. Hi, Tom. Okay. I, I thought I, I thought you weren't available to do it today. No, I'm available. I just wasn't available earlier to set it up. So oh, okay. All right, everybody. So Julia's here. Hi, Julia. Julia's on Julia's on my tying bench. Okay, should I go? Yeah, go. Okay, so I'm me. using a very similar hook to Tom's, but a little more modern. Um the packaging isn't brown from age. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a lightning strike NW3, so 1X long in size 12. And um, uh, tying thread for me is just UTC 70 denier in, in a dark brown. You can do it in black, whatever you want. And um, for the, the, the tail and for the actually the hackle, I'm going to use uh, just a uh, a hen uh, saddle hackle uh, patch, nice, nice kind of uh, good looking modeled feathers. And let me go a little wider here, guys. So, so I'm going to, for the, for the tail anyway, I want some longer fibers and generally I like the ones out by the side, kind of like you'd uh, so select uh, any kind of tail fibers more out to the side than the middle of the neck. Move right a little bit. Uh, move right a little bit. Yeah. Okay, like that. Julie, do we have any questions so far? We didn't have many. Just a lot of commentary. Okay. Um, Am I still good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. So, um, pretty much same thing as Tom. I'm going to leave some space behind my hook eye. Uh, and just take a few wraps rearward and then snip off that excess tag. This hook is, it, it's kind of interesting in that um, when, it, when you go back, the bend starts a little forward, kind of, you can probably see that on the video, 
where you're used to. It's it's not even halfway between the hook point and the bar before it starts bending down. And I really want to keep it on the on the the flat part of the shank if I can. And so I'm going to switch back and just grab. These are nice soft feathers, but good markings on them. And uh, strip them free. Just kind of keep their tips aligned. <clears throat> and as Tom did, I'm going to go. Let me zoom out just a just a hair. It's I mean just like three quarters of a hook shank in length for the tail. Nice, nice and short. Yeah. And I'll give it a little check there. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Wrap forward and then lift those butts up and snip them off. I actually might wrap just a little further back than that. To oh, no, that. you can't. No, 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 no. That, go back no, no, no. Not allowed. Right. Not allowed. Call, call the tying police. That does look much better. Yeah. I was wondering when you were I was wondering when you were gonna do that. I knew you couldn't let it sit like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like the right. length too. That's 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 what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it's rib time, right? Yeah. Rib. Let's have some ribs. Okay. So I'm using and I like I like a um I like a very uh, narrow oval tinsel. Maybe it's my um, fascination with John Atherton's flies who used um, uh, fine oval gold tinsel. Um, you know, uh, some people use, fl you can use flat gold tinsel. I think the hair's ear fly does call for gold. Um, I think the original one maybe, maybe had, had flat gold, but we're going to, we're gonna put in. We're gonna use. Uh, we're gonna use oval gold. It's uh, it's a little more subtle, and I I just like a little tiny bit of flash in my flies. And one of the things that that Tim and I didn't mention that we probably should is for those of you who are interested in the history, this is one of the oldest flies that's pretty much been around since what the 14, 15, 1600s. Um, you know, this, this fly is, this fly is, is, is pretty much unchanged. It's an old, old pattern. So I'm just going to put that oval gold tinsel on top of the hook and wind it back till I'm right to the point where my tails are. Hard to see from here. I think I'm good. Yep. Okay. And then I'm just going to let that let that hang. Your turn. All righty, sir. Um, well, I'm I'm kind of with with Tom on this one, but I and I I'm going going to use tinsel. I'm going to use small oval gold tinsel. But the fact of the matter is, when I when I really tie these for myself, I use wire. And I, I know it's not traditional, but but to me, I, I have never really liked tinsel. I, it it kind of tends to split. I, I just don't think it looks as sharp um, as wire. And my feeling maybe on the wire is that back in the day, tinsel was a lot better than the wire that they could make. But with, with things like ultra wire, stuff lasts forever. It's, it's, it's just really nice to tie with. But to stick with tradition, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to use tinsel, small gold, just three to four inches. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a, a really good, um, observation. And honestly, when I tie, you know, if I'm tying a classic fly like this, I'll try to follow tradition. But yeah, just stick with what. Yeah, but if I'm inventing something or tying a pattern of my own, then yeah, I'd, I'd use wire definitely. Yeah, and you know wire. Because you're right; they did terrible. All they had was, you know, in the old days, like you know, in the Frank Sawyer days, and he was tying his pheasant tail. They just took copper wire out of an electrical cord, and it was hard to get different diameters, and it wasn't that strong. Ultra wire is just great stuff. 
Is it bad that I say even back in Tim Flagler's day, that's what we used to do? Take apart electric motors and telephones and things yeah. like that for a while. I did it. Yeah, I did it. So I am going to start on top of the, the shank, but I'm going to let, just for safety's sake, I'm going to let my thread push that tinsel, that gold tinsel to the far side of the hook. Um, and that, that just ensures any way that, that when I take that first wrap of tinsel, it's not going to jack around the tail too bad. Yeah. You know, I want to contact the underside of the shank as opposed mm -hmm. to the, the tail. I think mine, if I look, mine's actually a little bit on the far side, but mine's far, more yeah. on top than yours. Now, okay. if I was, if I was counter wrapping the rib, I'd want it on the, the near side to start. Like if I was going yep. over pheasant tail or uh, something right, like that. Right, right. Yep. Body so you're, time? you're up. Body. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Body time. So um, I'm just going, I'm going to use my, uh, I like a dark hair's ear and I make hair's ear ahead of time. And I do like, I do like to make my own hair's ear. You just can't get that really um, good uh, mixed buggy look by um, any blend that I know of. So I, I buy hair's ears, I run through a grinder or a coffee grinder or felt them in, in some water. And um, I'm, going to, I'm going to just dub my body with some of this hair zero fur. I am not going to wax it at this point. Um, I don't think you need to. And I'm gonna back up a little bit so you can maybe see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little higher and I'm gonna back up with my I think you camera. need to switch cameras, Tom. Yeah, well, wait till I uh, stop oh. fiddling. Okay. <laughs> I don't wanna make people dizzy. All right. So even with even with something like hair's ear is actually pretty easy to dub. It's not that not that difficult. So I'm just going to pull some thread. Hi Julia, what happened to you? Did I Oh, and I'm going to start with just a little bit, just a little bit of fuzz on there so that I get a nice taper to this body. So just, just barely dirty that thread. And then I'm going to gradually add a little more. And if it's not, you know, if it's not thick enough, I can, I can add a little in there, but you can see and we've talked about this so many times, but the secret to dubbing is to um, use small amounts and a lot of pressure. And I, I, I noticed that you're dubbing, you are spinning counterclockwise. Is that wrong? Uh, <laughs> is that wrong? Well, in the Southern Hemisphere. Have I been what? doing it wrong? <laughs> well, technically, every time you wrap, if you're right-handed, you're twisting twisting the thread up clockwise. And so if you're dubbing on there counterclockwise, as you wrap, you're unwrapping the dubbing. But Oh, my it, God. Yeah, this, this is one of those things that the Internet is just loaded with. Oh, um, back Boy, and forth. Boy, is that geeky. Yeah, that, that really well, is geeky. Wow. All right. So I'm going to, you know, the nice thing about using this 12 thread is, let me come in closer here, is that um, you can take a few turns of thread before you start your body. And you're not going to create any bulk there. Do I have a gap in there? No. Yeah, you got to go back, dude. 
I do. There you, you. go. <laughs> I didn't have a cat there. You, Flagler. You are bad. I don't see that dubbing on winding. No, I got too much because I'm going to do something up here at the thorax. So I am going to stop there. Okay. You going to wrap your rib and then we'll... Uh... You want me to wrap my rib? Yeah, why don't okay. we do that and then... And I'll pro I'm probably wrapping in the wrong direction too. So you must take five turns of tinsel. Uh oh. You must always five turns. Always. And then I'm just going to cut that off. And now it's your turn. And Tim, please show people how to how to put dubbing on the right way. Oh, why? Thank you, Tom. Um, um, I I'm actually not going to use because because I did it the wrong way. I went <laughs> counterclockwise. Maybe we could get some comments as to what people think about dubbing direction. I don't know, but I, I don't use, think. That would be like learning to cast left-handed after all these years. Um, oh, I'm using, God. although it's a natural hair's mask, uh, it's light hair's mask. Yeah, we're getting that echo thing again, Tom. I don't hear it here. Okay, we're we're hearing it here. I'm going to try try to work through it, but I'm hearing myself talking and not liking it. I'm not hearing it at, at this end. Uh, okay. Julia, are you hearing it? I, I'm not hearing it, but I'm also, my audio is coming from your phone, so I'm not hearing it. Okay. Um, okay. I, oh, I'm, I'm on StreamYard, and I don't hear the echo. So. Okay, as long as I, the audience isn't hearing it, then it's fine. I'll, I'll deal with it. So, so that is not real hair's ear. This right here. This right here. Yeah. So it's not, it's faux hairs there. <laughs> okay. It's faux. It's faux. You think, you think TL is sitting there. You think TL is sitting there chopping up hairs ears to make. I, I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In terms of dubbing, I, I kind of do some weird stuff. Like I, I do like to start with my thread about midway up the hook shank. Oh, Tim, people are saying they hear the echo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, we don't really know what that is and why it decides to kick in at times and, and not others. Yeah. Huh. But uh, ho hopefully we can muddle through here. Wow, that's that's a. Hopefully we can muddle through here. Okay, I I can't tie and hear that. Um, sorry guys about that. Um, anyway, when I'm when I'm going to dub, I, I like to start with my thread. Um, can you hear me? Okay, Tom. I can. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Um, so I start with my thread about halfway up the hook shank, and. And I'm holding my dubbing down here, holding my thread tight. And these are just a couple of the weird things that I like to do. I, I do spin clockwise when I dub. The other thing, I'll spin like this, but I'll leave the bottom part of my noodle unspun. So I think you guys have seen me do this before. So I can kind of weave in the next little clump. Yeah. And it makes for a, a, a stronger dubbing noodle, I think, anyway. Yep. So maybe just one more on there, kind of weave that in there. And again, like Tom said, spin it night, get it nice and tight on there. And if you, I don't really like to move the dubbing needle up and down, noodle up and down, but if you do, just do it with like three fingers 
So you're moving the whole thing. If you try to grab one section, it gets all kind of kinky and nasty. It does. You have to retwist it really if you if you move it. Yeah. So I since I have a little space, what I'm gonna do is just wrap rearward and then I can time my wrap so that dubbing begins right at the base of the tail. Mm-hmm. And as I tell people, just wrap with utmost confidence. Pretend you know exactly what you're doing, and it'll land pretty much in the right spot every time, except not there. So I'm going to add just a little teeny bit more dubbing on there. Also, guys, there is no reason in the world that you, it, you don't have to get it right every single time. You can go back over and just just make it right that kind of don't don't let that go there there isn't a rule that says you you have to get it perfect so yeah or you um, start it wrap my tail pluck out some of those longer guard hairs what did you say tom four times around oh five 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 okay two take five turns three four five that's from my um from my days of tying full dress atlantic salmon flies you always take five turns on atlantic salmon flies okay that's, that's where that came from it's i i i say it merely as a joke but you took <laughs> it seriously. and uh here let me uh i got sorry about that guys i get a little uh yeah zoom in there uh let me zoom in there. I want to see how see how I did. There is. Uh, yeah. Is that is that okay for you, Tom? It's uh, it's rabbit fur. <laughs> a few yeah. a few guard hairs, but you know we'll we'll allow it. We'll, we'll, we'll allow that. that. We can go for that. Yeah. I'm gonna snip that off because that's driving me crazy right. I'll, I'll pluck those long ones off too but i you know i usually leave a lot of the longer ones because yes yeah. wouldn't be airs there without that kind of stuff true true that all right you're up buddy okay so i am going to um put in my hackle and i i believe that the um the classic I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna back up a little bit too. I believe the classic um, hair's ear was tied with um, just picked out hair's ear for the hackle. I'm not sure of that, but I think that's the way when I tied it commercially. That's the way I used to tie it. So um, to do that, I first like to get a little thread on the shank, not all the way to the eye. I'll come back to there, and then. Give your make a little loop. Just um, put a loop around your fingers and tie it in. And then it helps, which I didn't do here, to have your wax open. That's old wax too. Lots of old stuff today. And it helps to have your dubbing ready and your dubbing spinner because you're trying to do a bunch of things at once. And I do like to put wax when I when I dub in a loop. I do like to put wax. So I'm going to put a little wax on there. Try not to get those goops. Uh, I, if I get those big globs on there, I usually rub it with the outside of the tube. If you touch it with your fingers, then you have trouble picking up your dubbing. So. Uh, and then I like to put a, a blob of hairs here in this loop, fairly good sized blob. Um, I don't want it to be tapered or thin. I, I wanna wanna get a pretty good pretty good blob in there, like so. And I probably won't use all that. And then I'm going to grab wow. it with dubbing spinner and sneak that stuff back inside there just so it's all 
like so. Can you see that? Yep. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna pinch the thread and spin the dubbing spinner, which you can't see. Let me see if I can. There it is. So I'm pinching the thread and I'm not releasing it. And then I'm going to release it. And that'll start to spin around there. I'm going to spin, 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 spin. Now at this point, you're going to have some stuff that's, you just pluck it out, put it back in your pile because it's going to come out anyway. So now I've got a, I've got a bunch of bunch of hairs here, and I'm just going to wind this like I would hackle. I'm going to stroke it back a little bit. You know, three, four turns of this stuff. You don't want too much in there. Maybe one more half turn. Yeah, that's good. And then tie that noodle off. You can see I put too much on there. Oh, let me get closer so you can see that better. There. And then a couple things to do. One is to, first of all, get those hairs away from the eye. So just take a couple turns. And you can also trim anything that sticks out. And then um, I just take a dubbing brush or, you know, a piece of Velcro or whatever and stroke that back. So now I've got a nice flowing hackle um, made out of hairs here. Very nice. Okay. You're oh, up. I like, like that. Um, well, I, unfortunately for me, I, I kind of do it differently than Tom. I'm going to use a soft hackle for the collar. And, um, but what that really means is I, I, I put the collar on after I, I put the wings in. So I, I've got to get... So you have to do your wings wing first. Time. You have to do your wings first. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, both, uh, hold on both, one Tim and I, both Tim and I have been sweating the wings <laughs> because everything, everything can go wrong. <laughs> uh, I have. I've been having nightmares about this, to be honest with you. Well, no more. You're not having any more nightmares than I had with that stupid Royal PMX, man. That one, <laughs> I, I really lost sleep. You know how many Royal PMXs I have in my fly box now? A lot. Yeah, because I had to practice so much. All right, I, I think I'm set up here. But um, so what? First of all, I I get the um. To, to get the, the mallard slip wings, I, I buy two wings, um, a yeah. matching set of mallard wings. I yeah. take these out of the package, but they're they're a little stinky. Um, and so uh, I'll, I'll just let you see them. But anyway, what I do is I, I pluck matching feathers or as best matching as I possibly can from, from each wing. So I have a couple of different sets of them here. They're just oh, you they're do it the ahead of time. Together. That's smart. Uh huh. Um, I didn't hear what Tom said. Yeah. But, um, you do it ahead of time. You match them ahead of time. Yeah, I do. Uh, and then I use to to hold them together. I tried all sorts of things, but um, I arrived at, at little wire ties to to keep them together, and it, it allows me to do a couple of things. But um, so I'll go through, and I'm thinking size fourteen. You know, check them out. And uh, those are looking pretty tasty. I'm going to go with, with this set. And you can see they're pretty close side to side. And one of the ways for me to keep the slips kind of consistent is I'll, excuse the reach, I'll use a, um, the, the hook 
that I'm using, the same one I'm using for the fly. I use this to measure the thickness of the wing. So I, you know, from shank to point, it's like a perfect hook gap and I'll separate out the fibers that way. And then oh, try my right. best I yeah. go at 90 degrees to the feather. And I want to like snip that. off pretty much that, that same size slip. And it's one of the advantages of, of having the feathers together like this is that, that I can yeah. reach in and do the exact same measurement over on the other matching side. Again, I'll snip it off at about 90. I think I got most of it. I might have lost a fiber. And then I'll kind of look at them, and I'm not going to mess with that. They're they're pretty close in size. Uh, this one might be a – one of them might be a little bit bigger than the other. Um, but I'll show you the, the trick that I use when we go over to this other camera. And I I, I don't know. I, I've never been really able to make up my mind or get a – a really good read on with a wet fly, whether it goes on like this and with the, the cups together so they're like this, or whether you go concave out with the points up. Um, I, I, I think it's just a matter of personal preference to be absolutely honest with you. Um, but what, what I like to do is I like it for, for wets, I like that tip kind of pointed down with a natural curve going back like that. And just, I, I want the point about halfway down the short tail. So in other words, just past that book bend. And this is where I do things a little differently than most people. I'm going to take that feather. You're already, you're already doing it way different from me, Tim. And I just go like that, okay? And that's about the right length for me. Can you turn that up so I can hear Tom, Joe? Okay. I'm not. And, I'm not saying anything worthwhile. <laughs> so all all I'm really doing there is that's that's. Think of the 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 hook as a, a little workbench just to temporarily hold that. And the, the reason is is when you try to put these slips together just in in your fingertips especially when you have concaves in they you, it's just you can spend a half hour trying to get them together correctly in this way i can line up the tips and then what i do is i just unwind that one wrap and i bring them up like this and they're together and matching except i'm going to do that one more time sorry guys <laughs> I was, I was oh, wondering. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> That's all right. I'm probably going to do the same thing. Yeah. But it, honestly, it, it's worth doing again. You know, it, it's not harming the quills. Yeah. And I'll just do it kind of in one motion like I usually do. I unwind it and then I bring it up and squeeze. Yeah. And go around and just pull tight. And I'll keep on squeezing with my fingers, and then I wrap rearward just a few times, say a little prayer, and usually the wings come out nice and matched about like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There, I can push one down to make it look a little bit better. But you can see side to side, they're, they're pretty well even. Yep. Oh, I'm going to go take a drink right now just because... I got through that part. Anyway, I'll just finish it off. I use the uh, what I are you the drinking? Eye of the hook as a as a guide, and snip those extra little bits off, and then kind of tidy up the front end a little bit. Oh, thank goodness! I want to know what you're drinking. Oh, I don't know any anything in the cabinet. Maybe everything in the cabinet after that. <laughs> Wowza! I, um, you know, I you know I just I know this is a hard fly to tie, but I figured that we should challenge ourselves, right? And we should uh, challenge absolutely. the people who are listening. You know, every week I try to introduce a, a new thing so that people are 
are constantly moving outside their comfort zone, tying different kinds of flies. So, so I know it's I know it's hard, but we can do it. We can get through it, Tim. Yeah. No, I, I'm right. I'm honestly I'm uh, in the end. That's that's you know I know this is not um, uh, you know Don Bastian um, quality wing, but um, man, that's not bad for me. Yes. That's very You're nice. Up, man. Very nice. Okay. So same as Tim, um, I think it's important that you have matched um, matched pair of, of mallard wings because the, the size and the curvature on, on, on different birds is different. And so, um, you know, when you, if you're gonna, if you're gonna play with duck wheel wings, you're really, if you're going to tie no hackles, oh, we should tie a no hackles sometime. That would be a Ooh. real bloodbath. Um, you know, if you're going to tie stuff with duck quill wings and you need to buy match pairs of wings, um, I hunt ducks. And so I save all my mallard, wood duck, widgeon, you know, whatever, um, different wood, wood duck have a, a finer, um, lighter colored, uh, quill and uh, mallards uh, kind of medium gray black duck is very dark and so you know if you hunt ducks um, save all your wings just clip them off with a with a pair of tin snips and dry them and put them away so anyway um, I like to come in when I when I use a duck wing I don't like to use this first primary they're a little bit pointy and a little a little short I like to come in maybe two, three, or four quills. And this one already has a bunch missing um, because I pulled them out of there. But um, here's, the, here's the quills I'm going to use. And you want to look at these quills and you want to you check and make sure that the curvature matches because even with a matched pair of wings, um, sometimes, sometimes the curvature doesn't, doesn't quite match. So you want to see if you want to make sure that 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 curvature matches um, as much as possible because it's going to make it easier to set your wings. Okay, and the other thing that if you're using duck quill wings, you want to pay attention to is this shiny bloodline here. You never want to tie that in because that those wings will accordion and fold on you. You got to. You're, you always got to tie in beyond that shiny bloodline. So unlike Tim, um, but I, I'm from now on, I'm going to use Tim's measuring method, but I'm, I'm not going to do it today. Um, I just eyeball. I just eyeball mine. And, you know, stroke them together. Make sure that everything is, make sure that it's neat and there's no blood on the, the thing. And. You know, I'm going to eyeball them. I'm going to cut one, put it down, and then I'm going to come to the other one. And cut one. And then I eyeball them. I just look, and they look, they look about right. I think this one's a little bit bigger. So if I want to make that just a little bit thinner, I come in on the end here and you can just peel away one fiber at a time. Now I've got that a little closer in width to that other wing. Okay. Uh, so it's very easy to, to match those up. And then I just, I match them before I tie them in. I put the tips together and you can put them in your fingers and slide them back and forth or whatever. And I make sure, go to the other camera. See, that's sure. the part that I have no luck with at all, Tom. I, I end up slipping them around for better part yeah. of 10 minutes. Yeah, I just slide them. Yeah, and that then, would be You look at them and say, yeah, that's about right. Maybe a little heavy, but they're going to 
they're going to compress a little bit. And then I use a, I use a very traditional winging method in that I get them where I want them and I center them and I just kind of wiggle them just a bit so that they straddle that, that hook and then spin my thread counterclockwise so that it jumps back and I use a, use a very firm pinch wrap. I take one turn and pinch hard and pull straight down. And then I come in again. And at this point I look at them and they suck. <laughs> Actually, sorry. <laughs> Actually, no, they look good, Tom. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, flag. No, actually, they look all right. Um, they're, yeah, they're fine. They're fine. I'll take a couple, I'll take a couple more turns in the same place, and then I don't wind back on the wings once I got them set, and I'm happy that they're symmetrical, and they're set. Um. I don't move them. I don't wind back on them. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm done. Are you gonna snip those butts off while I take a drink? Okay, I'll snip the butts off while you take a drink. <laughs> I'm jealous. I don't have a drink, but it's a little too early for me. Uh, don't rub it in with that. Oh, it's 9 a.m. somewhere. Uh, All right. And I'm, and I'm very careful about. Snipping those wings. Which is, as you know, is hard leaning over a camera. Yeah, <laughs> we both <I'm> done. <laughs> We both know that. Okay. You good? I snipped my butts. You took a drink. All right. So uh, mine's a little different than, than Tom's in that I, I'll i put on uh, just a little kind of soft tackle collar um, after this. And uh, I was saying to Tom, un unfortunately, I had, um, and I know some of you guys have probably experienced it, I had a little bug infestation a couple weeks ago from uh i i think i've had three in my tying career of uh 40 or so years but um it, it was from a full skin uh that a friend of mine gave me and that's where most of those you know maws or whatever is eating my stuff comes from or full skin so just just be aware of it anyway um they got hold of all my old indian necks which i really like to to, to tie soft tackle collars with and uh, so I got a new neck. I'm not not quite used to it, but um, uh, there's some really nice feathers on it. Let me switch. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, let me get that camera ready. Make sure we're going here. Yes. So there, there's a neck. Nice, nice modeled feathers. Um, but they're they're a little different than those those old Indian necks that I'm used to. Let me find a small. I like the feathers down here. They have tend to have smaller fibers. Uh, that one's not too bad. And so this, that's this, a, this and neck that's like a detailing material. So I'm only you. pulling out one material to do it. But one of the things that I found um, with this neck, anyway, I'm going to strip the strip the lower fuzzy fibers off. And Rather than use the, the full feather both sides, what I'm going to do is with the shiny side facing me, I know this is really untraditional, but I'm going to strip the feathers off one side. Now, I don't want a whole ton of hackle on here, and then I'm going to pull the remaining side down and snip off i'm going to make it a little smaller actually um little triangular tie and anchor and so when i go back to my fly little counterclockwise spin with the bobbin 
and kind of catch that triangular tie and anchor. I'm going to end with my thread right behind the hook eye. <clears throat> Gosh, I hope this works. Oh, I now hope this, it works, too, Tim. The, the stems <laughs> on this oh, are good. really, really brittle. Oh, it's but looking good, though. A few wraps. I don't want you too many. You won't break it. You won't break it, Tim. Pull a little harder, Tim. I can hear Pull him. A little harder. Pull a little harder on that heckle. Pull a little harder. Come on. Yeah. Oh, you um, did it. So nervy. <laughs> and what I found is you kind of have to go back with these and just kind of fluff out um, um, oh. fluff out those fibers. They, they tend to clump up a little bit. But by, by only tying in that one side, you know, just stripping off the other fibers, you get a good yeah. number of wraps, and it's still not, not really over-hackled. So, and, you know, ideally, I, I like my hackle fibers to come back. They might be just a little teeny bit longer than I'd like them to. i like them to just cover the hook point. And then I'm going to go back in, clean up the head a little bit. Try to leave that head pretty small. I like to uncord my thread before I whip finish just to make sure it doesn't get knotted up. And a little back to front whip finish. Oh, I got a... Julie, did, did you say we had a question? Wait, yeah, go ahead. Asking, how far over should the wings be set? He was just saying it looks like they're a little different on your on both your slides. How far what? Oh, how far back should they go? Yeah, it's it's really a it's really a matter of um it's really a matter of personal preference. I mean I like it to go about to the bend of the hook. Tim likes it to go to the middle of the tail, but um, you know that's uh, that's yeah, really, that's really absolutely a, personal preference. And you know, yeah, it's all over the map too, Tom. From what I've seen, and some people tie them tips up, some people tie them tips down. Yeah, um, yeah. And I'm and some people, up. you know, it's a really big wide wing that stands almost vertically. I've seen a lot like yeah. that. Yeah. Are you still there, Tom? Yeah, I'm just um, finishing off my head. Okay. okay. I'm here. Just concentrating. I got gotcha. you. We both we both survived it, Tim. <laughs> Some somebody asked a question. Did I sharpen the butt of my whip finish tool? Uh, and the answer is yes. I have. Um, I sharpened it to like a little chisel point. And uh, if you guys want to do that, um, what I'd recommend it's um, rather than using a grinder. Uh, grinder is too too aggressive. But if you use something like a, a belt sander where you have a lot of air going by and um, just sort of a medium grit or even fine grit and just sharpen the chisel point that way, it, it's not going to blue the metal and, and, and uh, decrease its hardness the way a grinder might. And normally I'd add a drop of head cement to this fly, but I'm, I'm so happy that I got this far. I'm not going to press my luck. I'm going to put a drop of head cement on mine. All right. If you're going to, I'm going to. You want to make sure you don't get that head cement back on your wing at all. I'm going to back up. That's a little tight on mine. There. 
All right. Should, should we uh, rotate over so we can see the opposite side of the wings? Yes. Let's rotate over. Always scary. In in synchronicity. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, nice cup, Tom. Um, look at that. Oh, look what happened, though. My wing already started falling apart because I was brushing that. Oh, man. I was brushing uh -oh. that dub. Oh, that's it. I lost. Yeah, don't don't let that influence your voting, folks. Uh, I lost. That's it. I blew it again. I blew it again. I could trim that off. Nobody would know. Are you uh, Are you ready for me to put the poll out, or you want to you want to put some final touches on top? Yeah. No, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just there. Gonna let now it looks up better. A now it looks better. I got that out of there. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it was just that one little piece that pulled down. Yeah, well, you know, it was fine when I finished the fly, but I was I was brushing that dubbing down, and I caught I caught a piece of the wing with the that uh, Velcro doodad. So, anyway, all right. Yeah, it's Miller time, Tom. Well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn on the other camera so that people can see my look of dejection. <laughs> oh yeah, actually, I'm going to change batter. I'm going to change batteries here in this camera. Using, I noticed, Tim, that um, running video constantly on these, even with a good battery, running video just eats up the battery in these cameras, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And um, I, I mean, do you have one of the AC this, power supplies? I, I do for my two, my two um, DSLRs, but I don't for this Sony RX100 that I use for my face. Yeah, um, gotcha, gotcha. I don't, and you know, I mean, this thing I can usually go on like four fishing trips before I have to change the battery. But when I'm running video like this, I don't even get a half an hour of, I don't even get a half an hour of, uh, of, vi of battery life. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Are we ready? Oh, I don't know. Are we ready? Yeah. Um, sorry. We can't hear. Oh, Julia, let me bring you over here. <laughs> Are you still there, Julia? Yeah. So what's the vote? Uh, uh, our winner is, is Tim. Of course. Well, I, I didn't even hear what she said. You won. You won, Flagler, again. I did. Oh. You have a you have an unblemished unblemished record. So some of the comments were really scaring me though. I holy cow. <laughs> wow. Oh, now I'm now I'm gonna have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have another one. Um Maybe I maybe I should give up fly tying, or at least give up competitive fly tying. Although I I think I'm gonna I, I like yours with that that pulled out hair's ear thorax that I just I like the look of that better than the than the than the hackle really. Just yeah, looks well. Did did you vote for me, Flagler? <laughs> My my hands were tied. I, I really just. I <laughs> oh well, that was fun. Anyway, um, yeah. So, yeah. one month from today, we're tying again, right? We have another tie off. Yeah. What's it going to be? It's your turn. It's your turn to pick the fly. 
um, we, we have, we are very open to suggestions from the audience. Um, certainly, uh, we love, uh, we love pleasing you people. That's why we're here is to give you a little entertainment, a little live entertainment. But, um, you know, if you have some suggestions, put them up there in the comments field and, um, we'd be uh, glad to entertain suggestions for a fly pattern. Right. Tim? Yeah. But that's. The the psycho who meant who suggested the Bergman married wing wet can forget about it. Oh yeah, no, we don't. Yeah, we're not, not doing happen. married wing yeah. wets like Parmachini Bell or a silver doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No sir, Jock Scott. No, we're we're not talking. We're not. <laughs> that's just cruel. That is that's really cruel. We're not tying a Jock Scott. Sorry. Well, uh, we'll we'll come up with something. I'll, I'll uh, uh, we could do like a rusty rat or salmon fly or something like that. That's a fun uh, black fly. bear green butt. Black bear green butt. Yeah. 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 Always, always good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> good fly. Good fly. <laughs> uh, some of those are too much. We we should not have opened that door, Tom. Open what door? The door to what people want to see us tie. Oh, are we getting a lot of suggestions? Oh yeah, some. Yeah. Well, some I'll look them over. I look them. I'll look them over, and um, you know, we can look them over afterwards and see if we have some good suggestions. All righty. I know they're all trying to be funny and giving us really difficult flies. Jock yeah, Scott, yeah. it would it would be it would be a two, it would be like a three hour tying session. <laughs> Yeah, your, your buddy uh, Phil Monahan suggested a San Juan worm. Oh, I can tie those. So can I. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, I'm going to go have another drink and take a nap. All right. Well, thank you, Tim. Um, thank you, thank Tom, you Tom, for coming in. It was really fun, and it's always fun tying with you. And um, that's a beautiful, beautiful hair's ear wet that you tied. As and is yours. I want to thank everyone for I want to thank everyone for coming in and and cheering us on. I'm not thanking the people that voted for Tim, but <laughs> no, I'm thanking everyone that came in and listened today because it's always fun to to have all of you here. So thanks for your questions and your comments, and uh, we will see you. We will see you with, with another tie-off in a month. Um, we will see you next week where I'll be tying all by myself where I don't have to compete. What am I tying next week? Uh, here, I got it. Next week, I'm tying, I'm tying a bonefish gotcha. So um, those oh, of you nice. who um, right. uh, like to fish for bonefish, um, it's also a good fly for for carp and redfish and uh, you catch almost anything with it, but it is a bonefish fly um, and uh, uh, also permit have been caught on it. So we're going to tie a salt, little, little saltwater fly next week and um, slightly different techniques for you to, for you to see. So we're trying to give you, you know, different flies, a wide variety of flies, just because you don't tie saltwater flies doesn't mean you can't learn some techniques from, from um, watching me tie a bonefish gotcha. So that's what we're tying next week. And then the following week, I'm tying the um, Dawkins DD midge, a fairly simple um, midge pattern for good for fall and winter fishing. And then um, Monday, October 26th, I'm tying a steelhead intruder with a uh, kind of full dress intruder with all the, most of the bells and whistles. So, um, that's what we're going to be tying. Trout flies, bonefish flies, and steelhead flies over the next three weeks. So thanks, everybody. Yes, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Julia. Bye, Jim. Bye, Joan. See you guys. <laughs>